Hey, Larry. I see you. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, I don't know what happened. Can you Technology. can you hear me well? Because I'm trying something out with a new microphone here. You're very very uh, very legible. Is it is it not too loud? No, it's it's okay. Yeah. It's slightly loud, but okay. nothing that uh, hurt well, my ears or anything. No. When you see my pull my head someone's off, you'll know it's too loud. <laughs> but I'll uh, reduce it. A Antonio. Bit. Hey, Antonio. Good morning. I reduce it a little bit. That's better, I think. Yeah, sounds good. What are you doing differently? I put a, a microphone on my desk here instead of doing it through the Eigenhop, which means that I'm, okay. not, I'm not tied to the setup that I'm using. Um, okay. So, uh, if some people have questions and I want to switch setups, it's, it's a bit annoying otherwise because uh, the microphone cuts out in the middle and stuff like that. So. <laughs> hey, Antonio, how have you been? We have no noise from you. Sorry. Yeah, yeah, there you are. There we go. Yeah, this is muted over here. Yeah, uh, everything fine with me. Cool. Yeah. Cool. I haven't lunched yet, but <laughs> <laughs> Mondays are uh, always a lot of things going on. Uh, yeah. Well, we we can we can change days if people think it's necessary. If people think it's necessary. Oop, someone's got a feedback Oops, there. Someone's got a feedback there. Is, Is that me? Mike? Yeah, I think you're feedbacking. Yeah. Hold on, I'll mute myself. Maybe. <laughs> well, we can hear you now, but it's not feedbacking anymore. It's good. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, Mondays work as well as any day okay, for me, feedback. but I'm pretty flexible, so. Any day you want to make it is okay with me, I guess. Yeah, I'm fine. We'll just see if you know if, if people want to change the days and just just tell me and figure yeah. something out. So, at least we're, we've quit changing time zones is again. That, so, is, is is this the last change? I think right. This is done now. I think so. Yeah. Is Australia still afterwards or not? I don't know. I can't remember. Um, New Zealand Australia. was the same as Europe, I think, but I, I think we're all back to being done changing or not changing at all. Right. Yeah. <laughs> I want to go to Russia. They said they aren't going to change anymore. <laughs> they said they're yeah. done with it. <laughs> yeah, I like that also, yeah. Russia. Yeah, it, it, um, it takes me a few days just to change all my time indicating devices. Because I, you know, I just take my time at it, and but then it takes my body about two or three weeks to get used to it. I'm hmm. still waking up. I'm real early in the morning. <laughs> so. Yeah, I don't have much trouble with that. Yeah, some people don't. Other people are just they're, they're are so regular in their body clocks that, you know, I, my body doesn't care what this thing with the hands on it says. It says no, it's this time. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you can't fool me. You can't fool me. I know what it is. I really liked your um, synth uh, stage tabs. Oh right! I yeah. saw those. Those look real interesting. What does it take to run those? You have to <laughs> rewrite Eigen D besides the stage tab. Well, it's actually the, all, all this stuff is in in 2.0 now. Um, most most okay. of the agents to do this are in in 1.4 also. Um, but since it's actually you know this, this is an interesting tidbit. Those synth agents are one of the first agents that were ever written in Eigendy. So they've been there for three years. Um, the <laughs> thing is, though, that nobody really actually started using them. There is this synth uh, you know, instrument in the alpha setups um, that people never really delved into. But apart from that, no one ever actually used it. So when I started doing stuff with it um, to kind of mimic what uh, the analog synths are doing, um, I, f I found a little, you know, a couple of little things that were missing, um, more specifically related to uh, poly poly polyphony management, so that um, uh, polyphony would be handled all the way through, even through the filters and stuff like that. Um, oh. So, um, because if you want to do it in 1.4, you you basically have to create uh, individual audio audio paths for each individual polyphony, polyphony channel. Um, for each individual yeah. oscillator and stuff like that, which means that you're actually each time using another filter, and and the latter filter that's inside Agendi is is sounds very good, but it's quite resource intensive. 
So um, that didn't really work out that well. So I just added a new agent in 2.0 um, this weekend that instead of being, so there is already the summer agent that we have, which basically um, uh, sums down everything. It goes from any kind of polyphony to just one audio channel. So if, if, you, if, if you play, this is, I don't know if you know this, Larry or, or Antonio, but if yeah, you play, if you, if you play a, note, a note on the eigenharp, you've got four streams coming out that are independent for each key, right? Yeah, that's so, okay. Um, so there is a, at the activation, which is the fact that the key is being used, and then pressure, left, right, up, down. And these are being handled all the way through the system which is one polyphony channel, right? So as, as many keys as you're playing are actually implicit, it corresponds to the number of polyphony channels, but if you want to go through an oscillator, for, for instance, um, you want to preserve that when you come out of the oscillator, because if you want to, for example, do uh, uh, get into a filter and change the filter frequency for that particular key that you're pressing, you want to have that information all the way through to the filter, uh, while in one area, <laughs> Mike's being attacked. <laughs> Drama there. So while when you you know when you go through the oscillators, that's one audio path. But if you go from um, let's say for example an envelope generator, if you control the filter cutoff, it goes through a totally different. Uh, series of connections because it doesn't go through the oscillator but it still has to meet up and know that you're talking about that particular key um, okay so there was kind of an agent missing in 1.4 to make this uh, easy to do um, so that's one that I added this weekend and now now it's actually extremely playable um, it's, uh, yeah, nice. yeah, yeah I, I remember trying to uh, add for example, the sine wave, it's easier to to manipulate. Right. And I ran in that summer, uh, some agent. Yes. And I, I realized you have to to, to do that. But, uh, yeah. Yeah, the summer basically, uh, summer agent has been there until now, always to just go into, for example, an audio unit so that you have one audio channel. Otherwise, you have yeah. as many audio channels as the number of keys that you're yeah. pressing. So. <laughs> yeah. And the audio unit just picks the yeah. first, which means that you, you know, only the first key that you're playing will be, will be heard. So that's what the summer has been for. It's basically a polyphony summer. Um, it sums all polyphony down to one. Um, while yeah. the other way around, we didn't have a summer that takes multiple audio channels that have polyphony in them and match the different keys together so that you can have different audio signals, for example, uh, a rectangle oscillator and a, a triangle oscillator that are uh, all playing with four channels of polyphony so that it matches the, f the first channels each time up, the second, third, and the fourth, but still yeah, keeps yeah. the number of polyphony at the end. And that's, that's a new summer that I, I added over the weekend. Let me see. Nice. Uh, yeah. in a, the new, the new t stage tab reflects that, of course. Yes. You have sine, saw, yeah, triangle mm -hmm. one, triangle two. That's just four channels of polyphony. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Pretty, pretty wild. Yeah. Sounds pretty thick. Yeah. Reminds me of Emerson. That was a full hand. Twenty channels. <laughs> Jeez. Reminds me a little bit of Emerson, Lake, and Palmer. <laughs> yeah. Well, I like those kind of synth sound that have a little bit of delay on them. Uh... Yeah. Well, that, that definitely seems like it's going to make that synth a lot more usable and a lot more um, versatile yeah having all those controls on it it'll, it'll look a lot more like you know some of the other uh, sense that or even the analog sense um, which is enough to drive you crazy but that'll be nice <laughs> I, I can share the stage tab let me see. you see that yes I do so um, so basically the way that I set this up is that those are two envelope generators this is the volume envelope generator to the left and to the right is uh, the filter envelope generator, and um, so I can I, I can basically uh, let, let's say that I take a, 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 a little a slow attack here, and then you can uh, have to take out the aftertouch. You can 
hear the filter resonance go up slowly over one second. Or uh, let's say that I want to take out uh, this rectangle oscillator and this side. I just have one rectangle oscillator. Change the pulse width. Detune it. You can do anything. Right? Basically, like a you no know, analog synth, you have all these controls yeah. that work, work in real yeah. time. So, uh, I think that That's will nice. be a lot of fun once once we start yeah. shipping that. This a Christmas present? <laughs> <laughs> maybe, maybe. We're trying really hard to get 2.0 out as quickly as possible now. So yeah, kind of depends on, on the last remaining. Uh, you know, usability, us little usability problems with Workbench, which is always, you know, you find out a whole bunch of little things once you start building big stuff with it. It's like, oh, maybe this should be different and that should be better like that. Yeah. And so, but it's it's really getting there. It's, uh, yeah, we're, we're all anxious. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> can imagine. <laughs> um, you know, it's there's so much that I haven't done with the Eigenharp. Uh, I've only been in Factory Setup 2 once or twice. <laughs> I haven't even gone to Factory Setup 3. But uh, you see all these new things coming up, and you want to have them. I don't know. <laughs> I think that's human nature, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, it is. Oh, it's, it's there. It's I want more. to be able to use it. Now, a question on the synth. That's going to use any, uh, any of the scales that you can set up in Eigenharp yeah. now? Yeah. OK, yeah, so it's, it's not limited like manager. the, uh, like the uh, audio units are limited. No, 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 no. It's, it goes so straight nice, out of yeah. the scale manager. So it, yeah. you, you can use any kind of um, uh, equal tempered scale or not, or, or Indian scales or microtonal scales or without... The scales you uh, make up yourself, have yeah. a, having 22 yeah. steps between the octaves. Yes, and, yeah. you can do whatever you want. It yeah. will just, the oscillator what? will just oscillate at the frequency it requires, and that's it. Larry, why do you think AUs are limited in that sense? Well, because most of the AUs I've seen, maybe Gert can tell me I'm wrong or something, but when, you, when, you, when you're playing from the Eigenharp, you're basically sending it MIDI notes, and the AU interprets it as MIDI notes. Now, maybe some AUs you can, I, th I think uh, A Alto can alter the MIDI notes after it receives them, but uh, like in contact and stuff, it's going to be stuck yeah. to, I mean, uh, yeah, you can still do blues okay. scale and minor scale and stuff, but sure. you can't do, you can't when do you, when you you can't do microtonal, you can't do more than 12 steps in an octave, things like that, because it, it's MIDI limited and by the uh, audio unit. But like I said, I think A-Alto, you can choose a whole bunch of different scales, so somehow it's taking the MIDI and converting it into something more varied. I don't know exactly how they're doing that. I just started working with that. Uh, another possibility uh, of doing that through AUs is to have some pitch bends straight from the beginning sent out. Uh, that is uh, yeah, actually been, what we do in with Eigen D, but it kind of depends on how the AU interprets yeah. that. Um, yeah, I, I've been doing that in uh, Ableton because most everything in Ableton is the same way. It's uh, set up in MIDI notes, but you can go in and you either use pitch bend, or the other thing I can do is I can take a MIDI uh, clip and I can convert it into an audio clip just by dragging it over into an audio track, and then when it's in an audio track, you can change the uh, you can transpose it by a, a cent at a time, if you want to, right. or or full or for full semitones, so you can set up your own scale by by offsetting a bunch of notes. Um, it's a little bit of a kludge, but it works. Right. Uh, if if you want to do that, then that's just something I'm experimenting with. Um, I don't know where it's going to go, but uh, <laughs> just just trying to be different and uh, see what works right. <laughs> or doesn't work. <laughs> And that's what a lot of the fun is at, right? <laughs> well, that, that's where I'm at because I figure, you know, I, I love jazz and blues and classical and all these different things, but, I mean, there's so many people that are already doing fantastic stuff with it that it take me forever to catch up with them, so I might as well spend my time trying to invent something new and different is the way I feel about it. Mm -hmm. yeah. I mean, I don't, I don't have to make a living off of it, so right. <laughs> I have that freedom. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So what, what do you have behind you there, Antonio? Is that your analog synth? Uh, yeah. Over here? Yeah, yeah it's, it's the, that's Quark MS-20. Oh, right. Uh, yeah. yeah, I was playing. Yeah, I, 
I'm just having some fun with the Pico. It's not connected right now. I, I'm using the, the iPad to... I'm just playing with CV or MIDI through CV yeah. so I can, can play. But I can... I hate those keys. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yeah, I got... It's difficult a, to get back to, right? <laughs> very. I think it's very. Uh, I got one of uh, one uh, one opinion on the, that video that I got from playing the Bach, and people playing for twenty years keyboards are looking to the alpha with with a with a different way of of imagining things. Uh, Jim Jim, one of the Pico. Uh, Jim Sells? Pico guys, yeah. Uh, also, been loving what what we can do with the scales and yeah, yeah. No two keys have the same name. Uh, the piano we look and a C is always a C and cannot be. I don't think we can change this. Yeah, uh, yeah well, there are some you know, synthesizers allow you to do that, but it's it's not many. Uh, it take, takes a shift in, in your mindset because everything is structured in yeah, twelve yeah. tone scale, so um, means that you have to unlearn the visual aspect of it and start <laughs> yeah. thinking that the keys and do something different, which is much more difficult when when there is this kind of structure because it's almost like labeling them. It's almost like writing C on on the C note. It's yeah, the, yeah, the structure yeah. imposes that mm -hmm. basically uh, as a mental model. There's a number of new key, keyboard kind of things I've seen out there recently, mm -hmm. but you're always, you know, putting your hands like this, even though they're different than a standard keyboard and have different configurations, but it's still this as opposed to hugging it. Right. Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yes, that's what I often say to people about the Eigenarp. I say, why is it different? I say, well, it's close to me. I can uh, take it in my arms. <laughs> it's like guitar. Yeah. <laughs> that's that's why guitar is one of my favorite things because it's yeah. just uh, it's so close to your body and you're connected to it and again you're kind of wrapping yourself around it. Uh, it has a nicer feel. Definitely, uh, the Eigen Harp is about as close as you can get to that. I think. So that's one of its strong points. Yes. So, Garrett, how's your uh, Zoe Keating cover coming? Uh, I kind of. I can't uh, say that five times. <laughs> <laughs> I, I I got through to two minutes or something like that, um, but then I I got the the, the little fatty and uh, the slim fatty and yeah. started doing the synth stuff and <laughs> I'll get back to it, but I want to get this synth stuff done first. Um, a, a question that came up on on I think the Pacific conference that uh -huh. that you weren't on was about the motion detector. Yes. Um, and so what had crossed my mind is you had asked when you were talking about the Keating cover about uh, the percussion she does with the bow. Mm -hmm. And I wonder if you could get an audio stream out of the motion detector. Normally we shouldn't be talking about this. <laughs> oh, sorry. <laughs> so, um, okay. Anyways, okay, stop, I'll stop, stop the recording. Talking. Stop the recording, and now we can talk about it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It could well, be, just it should, absorb it be, that it should, comment. It should be possible, um, but the the way that I'm thinking of going with with that cover is is actually go the other way around. Instead of trying to mimic what she is doing, is I'm gonna unwind it. And trying to play what she's trying to mimic, because what yeah, she's doing, what she's doing with her, you know, with, with her cello is trying to get some percussion going and get, you know, yeah. since she doesn't have access to other instruments, she doesn't she solves it like that. Uh, after thinking about it, and saying, well, well, I can't hit the cello, but it, but I've got an eigenhop. Why would I want to hit a cello? I can I can play <laughs> another instrument. So. Yeah, um, good point. So that's that's the way that I'm gonna do it is to try to find some other instruments that marry themselves well with uh, the arrangement of that particular piece. Um, that makes sense. Yeah. Now sh she was using a looper. Are you looping yeah, I'm gonna things try also? With, uh, try with super looper also. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 
And I think she does use Super Looper, doesn't yeah, she? Yeah, she does. She looks like four, it. Four instances yeah, it looks like it on the screen. But what I think that she does when I look at the video, because she's got the video, the Wired video, where you can quite kind of see very well what she does. I think that uh, Live is set up to automatically turn loops on and off. I don't think she does it all in real time with her feet. Because you can see stuff seeing, you know, it's kind of progressing through through the little squares in life and and you see these super looper looper audio and it's turned on and off. And I think that she's actually programmed the series of uh, uh, of changes of how the looping goes. And sometimes she still interacts with it in real time, but a lot of it is being automated because it does change a lot. She kind of plays loops every every two or four bars and then takes them back afterwards and turns three on at the same time and stuff like that. So yeah. I think that's kind of pre-programmed. Yeah. Right. I, I use is. a lot I use a lot of timeline. Things happening where I know they are going to happen. Yes. Uh, yeah, and use that. Uh, I'm I'm <laughs> this is, is this is funny. Uh, in Eigen D I think you got the <laughs> Shared knows this. Um, you can pre-program to have um, loops happening. I think in time. Uh, imagine you have a loop and you want it to start uh, ten bars after you start the metronome. I think it's it's doable. Well, I think that's actually what Zoe Keating is doing. I think she actually does loops of loops. Hmm. Like patterns of loops? I'm not sure about that. But it's possible, yeah. Is that what you mean, Antonio? No, no. Um, I, well, what I, I've come up with the, in reading, I think you can record something uh, and say that that recording, you can uh, start it 10 bars after you start the metronome. Yes, you can set it up, yeah. For each yeah, recording, yeah. there is. A, yeah. I have to look the eye and look on top for that, but you can say that, yeah. Yeah, yeah. You'll have to record it beforehand, though, then. Yes, of course. <laughs> right. Well, what she does is, is you know, that's quite interesting because she's kind of have the she has the structure fixed, but everything that's being heard is still being played live. Yeah, yeah, I think so. Which, which is nice. It's kind of like having this uh, blank formatted sheet with you know little you know, locations where you can color, and but each time you color it in. And then you yeah, you just got to stay in the lines. Yes, you got to stay in the lines. Otherwise, <laughs> otherwise you all mess up. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but that must be actually very frustrating because the slightest, slightest little mistake you make during your live playing, it's it's gone for the whole, for the rest of the song. Yeah. <laughs> Well, that's the advantage of a live performance. Everyone is different, huh? <laughs> Maybe not the way you wanted it to be, but... <laughs> so, yeah, I'm, I'm using that re X Resonance plugin you, you talked about, Mike. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I, I find that really covers up any aliasing quite nicely. Yeah. Anyway. <laughs> nice so sound again. Now. Sorry? What was that again? The plugin? That you're using there? That's, yeah, the that's, uh, that's our cello. It's the Agendi cello with a little bit of compression on and uh, and the X resonance plugin. The, the, uh, X resonance. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. It's at music unfolding. I'll see if I can find you a link. Okay. It it it, it, uh, it simulates sympathetic resonant strings. So you can set it, very set, good. Set, set it up in the tuning that you want, and then uh, and you can fine tune the volume of each string and. So yeah, set that up for you know cello tuning and uh, kind of fine tuned the individual volumes. So, hmm. uh, do I Thank you. Got it. The price is right too. Yeah, it's done this way, right? <laughs> what does that mean? <laughs> it's free. It's free. It's free. <laughs> it's free. Okay. Yeah, it's free. Hmm. Yeah, that's okay. 
there's some um, mention of that also on the forum a year ago, I think. Uh, that would be me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I commented. I don't know. On, the guy, I, I think I should deserve a share of that nothing. <laughs> I think That's right. <laughs> we'll give you at least 20%. <laughs> So how are you liking your new uh, little Moog, your slim Moog? Mm -hmm. Well, yeah. I like it, but I'm also shocked. It's, um, it's so, you know, basic. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it, yeah, is, it even, is truly basic. Yes, it's like, okay, it sounds good, but <laughs> yeah. is, is that what? it? It's, um, yeah. No, if you, if yeah, you well, that's why everybody... That's why people end up with a lot of things like Fugers. Yeah, yeah, I can imagine. One mm -hmm. of the first things I did was actually set up a little delay line in my Metric Halo audio interface so that I could yeah. turn that on and off with a little bit of reverb so that it wouldn't sound as raw. Um, but yeah, it is it's like, okay, well, hmm, I'll have to get used to this. <laughs> 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 and then my girlfriend, she was like, what are you doing? Can I listen to what you're doing? So you won't like it. You won't <laughs> like it. Well, let me listen. Okay, okay, you can listen. Are you kidding me? What? Yeah. We're not gonna play. You're not gonna use that in the band. No, no, no. I'm not gonna use that. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> hmm. But I, you know, it's so, interesting. It's interesting. The, the the feel of the knobs is interesting. You know, that's that's one of the things that's that's really nice. It's being able to turn and touch it and. And just wiggle, wiggle with it. It's it's quite nice. Um, well, and the sounds it does produce are are good. They just by themselves are maybe not what you want to play. Yeah, yeah. But you know, the playing style also changes. You have to. I found that you have to kind of embrace the glide parameter and and make, yeah. and, and, and 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 make sure that you realize when you're re-triggering and when you're not re-triggering an envelope, so that you can get certain. Uh, resonance is going on in the filters while you're playing and stuff like that. So it, it, it's quite interesting to try to 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 play with that aspect of of, of the synth, uh, kind of pl yeah. playing with the physicality of it. If you play at the right time, then you can get the filter to resonate even more and and get it kind of you know, in, in in another sphere of resonance. I don't know how to explain this. But <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, that's, that's one of the things I've been having fun with. But now now I want more. I want I want at least. Mm -hmm. Two. <laughs> so that I can or are we a, ever surprised? So that I can have a yeah. drone sound going on while while playing the rest. But so I just posted a link to a, a synth called Crystal. Yeah, yeah, I've heard about mm -hmm. that. It's yeah, also uh, free. It's also free. Yeah, I use that with the audio cubes. Also, you mentioned that. Uh, yeah, on, on, on the tweets. Yeah. Yeah, I saw that from Bert, whose name I won't attempt. I'm, I'm not sure how <laughs> yeah. you say his last name. Uh, me neither. Um, but uh, I've downloaded it. It looks really good. It yeah. has an amazing number of envelopes in it, and everything, absolutely everything, is assignable to a MIDI CC. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I never it's tried very to, complex. And I, I've never tried to connect it either with the Pico or the Alpha, but I use that with, with the audio cubes because of the, all the, that faces. Sure. Yeah. But uh, I think it's, it's a nice plugin also, a synth plugin. It's well, and it's a nice sort of virtual analog quasi synth. I mean, it would it would do a lot of what we're trying to do. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. And it's also 12 note polyphonic, or I think even 24 note polyphonic if you have enough fingers. Mm -hmm. so. <laughs> or it's well, mono. you might have enough fingers depending on how long you hold notes. Yeah. yeah. Right. Yeah. Or I mean, you can have other things generating notes besides your fingers too. Sure. <laughs> so. But it's a yeah, it's a very a very complex, interesting looking synthesizer, and it's got a pretty good manual that comes with it too, which is most helpful. A lot of pages. And again, the price is right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And uh, I also like the uh, the the Alto plugin. I'm just using the demo right now, mm -hmm. but it's only a hundred dollars to buy the non demo, and that one is it actually has little virtual patch cords, so you can really go nuts on it. <laughs> what happens if I plug this into that? Ooh, mm -hmm. maybe that's not a good idea. <laughs> but I can do it. 
Yeah, I've been talking with him on, on Twitter. He, he, he might do a version, a version 3 where he supports the a MIDI channel polyphony model so that you can get poly polyphonic That'd pitch bent in and uh, polyphonic uh, CC expression in, inside Alto. So um, yeah. I hope he'll do it. Uh, yeah. We just have to get more eigenharps out there and then people will start wanting to write stuff for it. <laughs> yeah, but the thing is that that kind of model is, is still nice because it, it works with a lot of other instruments also. It works with yeah, uh, exactly. the continuum, oh, yeah. it works with uh, with his own sound plane. He's got, he's got his own instrument there, uh, Majorna Labs, and um, even with the MIDI guitar. So you know, there are a bunch of other instruments that can go through that model. So it kind of makes sense to push people to adopt it. Um, mm -hmm. Ideally, though, people should be writing IGNT agents, but that's not going to happen. Mm -hmm. Well, that's where I was just about to head. You know, it would be nice to see a lot of these things sucked inside. Yes. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> kind of hoping that in time, you know, this this will slowly happen. As you know, yeah. usually, it just takes a couple of you know, one or two vendors to start doing it. And then the others like, oh, well, maybe maybe we should look at it also and. Uh, yeah, um, you never know it's in how it goes. For example, Moog is starting to get into the soft synths. You never know. Maybe sure. maybe they might be interested in in one day just have their version of the ladder filter that they obviously have DSP code for. Uh, you know, they just could wrap it into our binary API and be able to plug it inside Eigen. Um, the same for the oscillators and uh, and you know, the delay and stuff like that. Could you know, it could happen. So. Yeah. <laughs> and then there wouldn't be quite as much uh, need necessarily for a modular, maybe, where you're trying to get around the MIDI limitations. You do it directly inside the computer. Yes, but some of those one thing that I realized while, while building this little analog modular setup in Eigendy is that it does take a lot of resources. You know, the amount of data that's being mm, sent yeah. through Eigendy is um, it, it takes a lot of resources. So I'm kind of at a limit when I you know if I don't decimate anything and I want to process everything fully polyphonically. Um, you know the the stage tabs that you see there. If I if I go further, I have to kind of make some compromises somewhere. It might only run on yeah. some machines and not on others and stuff like that. So um, and that's that where you can, 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 can still. I can still see the, the benefit. That's one of the nice things also I found about you know, when working with the Slim Fatty is, okay, it's only got one channel, but that channel will always play exactly the same thing, even if there's not, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> there's something yeah. else running or if my computer might be overloaded with some, some other software or not. I know that it will play exactly that, um, which is kind of, you know, it's, it's got a nice feel. On the other hand, I do think that, you know, Possibilities in, in, in software synthesizers are getting so good. Even with the with the alto synth that you said, it sounds very nice. You see, see some some of the patches on, in there are really really beautiful, and uh, and I think that we can get there with the Eigen D agents also. Um, if I play around with it, I said like, wow, wasn't expecting this. And, uh, yeah, I, I might be way off base, but my impression is that one of the reasons for the persistence of modulars and, you know, concrete modular analog synths mm -hmm. is their controllability at audio frequencies. Yes. Yeah. Which is also what drives people to control voltages. Yes. Yes. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. And, you know, that's hard to do in code. It, it's really intense. It is. But, you know, Eigen D does it, and it works, but... If you realize what happens, it's like, um, so we've got 8 kilohertz for each key. So and you're <laughs> processing that in real time. Yeah. It, yeah. It, yeah. <laughs> what? So, and, and it's not just audio, which is, which is where it gets difficult. It's not just audio. It has context information. It knows what the timing is for each individual message so that it can sync it to a clock and knows what the boundaries of the data is so that it can convert it and all that is needed since it's not audio it's you, you can manipulate the data at any any given time so it's much more data than actual audio data it's not just a floating point number it's a, a lot of info at 8 kilohertz is being sent around in terms of bandwidth um, so yeah yeah I can see the limitations there the the <laughs> things you have to keep track of, definitely. Yeah, it's like you know, 
this is a raw estimate, but I, I can, I can, I have never measured it, but I think that the key might probably roughly correspond to, uh, a f you know, a forty-four point one k audio track that's played in your door. So, per key, um, yeah, <laughs> yeah, so, per key, <laughs> you, yeah. So if you start manipulating that in real time and with good plugins, just you know, you have if you do this in your door, you like okay well i've got to be careful which plugins i put where but otherwise my computer yeah. will or i have to start yeah. playing at a using a latency that's unacceptable um, yeah so so yeah you yeah, get well, it inside the same limitations that goes back to what you said mike is that you don't have that with them with the modular it's like you know that it will always exactly go through the same signal paths and to the same thing because it's been designed for that and that's what it does yeah, mm -hmm. and you know, so I, I was thinking about that simply because so many people were on about their modular synth versus OSC versus digital, and, and I really think that's when you strip away everything else, that's the thing that hasn't really been ported over. Yes. Uh, mm -hmm. Yet. Yes. Anyways, I have a guest coming, so before the dogs greet everybody again, <laughs> I'm going to sign off. <laughs> Take care, guys. Bye. Okay. Bye, you. Mike. Bye, bye. Yeah. Yeah. We have to have the, this DC coupled audio outputs to to interface and and to let um, outside world to communicate. I think yeah, that's my next next pet project. I've yeah, what what did you find my crazy idea? <laughs> which which uh, one? Sorry. Uh, to use the oh yeah, to use volume pedals and sustain yeah, and stuff uh, like that. Yeah, out. I have to At try least it. we Might have work. to. Might work, yeah. We have to. I, I remember John um, talking about this. I think the audio is coming out is AC audio and not DC. I think so. So that's a problem. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know if you can change that. But one uh, thing you might do and might want to try it depends on the circuitry inside your pedal. You'll have to look at that. But if you output yeah. DC audio and go straight into the pedal and go back out again without actually going through the base station, maybe that might work. Yeah. Hmm. <laughs> Yeah, it's yeah. something you can try. It's a, yeah, a lot of experimentation okay. that will be going on. I think once once this will be activated. <laughs> yeah, yeah, uh, but I think in the the best way is to have an an audio interface and use that. I I'm lucky to have one or two. I think I think the. But you don't even need a DC one, right? That's uh, if you look yeah. at the Xbox oh, okay, yeah. website, you can make your own yeah, cable you... and and just use a regular AC coupled audio interface and just yeah, yeah. increase okay. the voltage yeah. levels, uh, and it seems to work. So and to to make them stable, yeah. yes, yeah. But yeah, I'm gonna start working on that as of next week, this weekend probably. As, uh, I wanted to finish off this other stuff first, getting the you know the. F I the don't remember his name, but somebody's already doing that, isn't he? Yeah, the expert uh, sleeper, silent way. Yeah, no, I think you mentioned uh, oh, referring to okay. Barnum. Barnum, yeah. Yeah. Bar yeah, okay. Chris, Chris. Yeah. But he's Chris. going over OSC into Max MSP, into silent <laughs> way as an audio unit, yeah. going out yeah. over DC audio, okay. generating CV into his modular. So. Any which way you turn this around, it's going to introduce quite a bit of latency. Yeah. yeah. It's, no, it's no way around that. So initially, you know, I was thinking, well, it would be cool to be able to drive silent way directly from MagnD. But then you know, it doesn't make any sense. And the easiest way is just to go straight out of MagnD. We've got all the signals. It just needs to be converted to an audio signal. Yeah. So, my next step is going to be to create, because we currently only have st uh, stereo outputs on the audio. Yeah, that's so one of the limitations. Yeah. So then will, that will not be a lot of work. Just be able to access all the audio outputs of your audio interface. And then through Workbench, you can basically tie anything to an, any audio input and then put a, uh, a signal to you know CV converter agent in the middle. And then, then it should yeah. be done. The other, the other step needed is a calibration step. Um, and I'm, hmm. I was wondering, I'm still not sure I'm going to do it. If I'm going to write an audio input agent, we, we need it also. But I'm not sure how much work that will be. Other way would be to just have an offline system for that that allows you to to, to process a recorded audio file to calibrate uh, the, you know, the DC audio that's being sent out based on the pitch that 
the synth generates. But yeah, okay. So, ah. but it, it doesn't seem that much work if I'm you know look at it. It's like the only thing that I really need to know is exactly what kind of waveforms to generate and <laughs> how to get the right <laughs> voltages to happen and yeah, yeah, because there's there's I'm just very new at this, but there seems to be some different CV. Uh, patterns that people are using. Some yeah. like zero to five. Some are minus five to plus five. Yes, and, yes. Uh, different uh, calibrations on it and so forth. Yeah. So, yes, it adds a little bit of complexity there as to what you're plugging it into. Yeah, and it also the stability of the thing. It's some apparently different since you, even though you've got, for example, one volt per octave, based based on how the oscillators work and stuff like that can be that as you move up the voltage the oscillator responds differently so that you don't have to send a linear curve but it might you know adapt based on uh, the peculiarities of the different of the specific oscillator apparently so uh, yeah yeah i think i've even seen the same modular synth require two different types of cv inputs depending on what unit you're plugging it into yeah so uh, you know one module might be plus plus to zero to five and one might be minus five to plus five and so you have to have different ones for different outputs uh, different controlling things yep but yeah I'll uh, start working on that very soon now uh, all the other stuff that I had on my in my pipeline for my spare time has been done so <laughs> <laughs> very good yeah. very good I wish I could say that <laughs> no for agony <laughs> oh for agony okay yeah. okay <laughs> <laughs> so, so the other hangout's been going well. Yeah, we had six yep. people last week or something like that. Wow. Yeah, it's it's working out real good, and uh, Antonio's been there and just been uh, able to be mm -hmm. a wonderful uh, source of information for people, because uh, two of the people that show up regular have picos, and of course I don't have the slightest bit of knowledge about a pico, mm -hmm. and so uh, Antonio's been a big help to them. Cool. And uh, it's also nice with the video interface where both of them can hold up their Pico and sh he can <laughs> show and the other guy can show and then, then you know, why isn't it working? And then Antonio says, oh, you didn't press that key or something like that. <laughs> it's almost like being in the same room. It works out really well. Yeah. It's a fantastic really cool. uh, yeah. tool. I am trying to, to as, as I... Hey, Chris. You made it. <laughs> hey. <laughs> Not hearing, maybe. I can you him. hear us, Chris? Hello, hello. Uh, I don't have any sound. Hold on. Uh, <laughs> we can you hear you. Yep. <laughs> hello? <laughs> hey. Let me. Some... I like that stairway. Wait music by Antonio. Hold, yeah. please. <laughs> it's just from the from the iPad. <laughs> I have to connect the Pico to it. Let's see if I can. I don't know what I've got set up here. Yeah. Well, why isn't it detecting that? Oh, that's a shame. Yeah. That's a problem. Hmm. Ah. start over. I sure like that circular stairway in his room. That was amazing. Yeah, about the other that's, uh, that's hangouts. <laughs> Just so, uh, because I collect every bit of bell cant or in information, and I've been keeping them very safe and trying to <laughs> figure <laughs> everything out. Uh, 
I don't know. I can try to 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 show people how how to to manage their ways and Definitely. and not to, yeah not to be scared and and tr trying to to show uh, wonderful things they can come up. Jim by now I think he discovered a lot of. Uh, Different ways to to make chords on the pico. Yeah, he's been uh, doing fun stuff with the scales. Yeah, yeah. And uh, again, it's it's wonderful to have uh, different uh, visions of uh, in the in the end the very simple things and and we all can enjoy this. Definitely. Yeah. yeah, it's not as complex as, uh, as Gert's uh, stage tab, but the stage tab that you sent me for uh, using the synthesizer was a big improvement, and uh, there's still quite a bit you can do with the synthesizer, even at that level. Yeah, Just using yeah. one oscillator. And, in, and if you add the simple delay, even the, the eigen D delay or... Um, Effects, other effects, it it really shines and it's really nice. I I tried to add some different waveforms and all that, but again, <laughs> uh, bel canto, it's it's not easy. And even I tried to help Mike the other day with the arranger, and um, he he wanted to change the length of of a of a step. Mm -hmm. uh, I did figure it out. Um, and I think I I send him I send that to him. Uh, of course, it, it's easy to to understand. And but there's actually something missing there, Antonio. I was a uh, yeah yeah. You can't. Yeah. So when you set up the notes with the different lengths, you can't remove it once you've set it. Yeah, so, I I end so I end up see, with that. I, I added it to our issue tracker. It's something we'll fix yeah? soon. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. yeah mm. It will be nice to have some. We get in in stage, of course, to change that. Yeah, that will not happen. <laughs> not in that. <laughs> I don't yeah. think that uh, it's possible to do that. Yeah. Maybe you know, I have to look at it. But... That's the slim fatty. Yeah. Nice. Well, that's the move. Okay. Yeah, that's definitely a move sound. Yeah, plays nice from the nice. other. <laughs> nice sound, yeah. Yeah. This MS20 is—it's—it uh, it has a lot of uh, soul in it, but it's completely different. Can you hear us? No, he's calling in. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> I think we all have our growing pains in the, in the first times with, uh, with the Hangouts. Yeah. Right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Where's Chris located? Do you know? Uh, New York, I think. New York? Yeah, I okay. think it's, ne it's New York. <laughs> Yeah, there's there's something very intriguing about the uh, the analog synth and the modular synth too. Um, 
I've been doing a lot of looking on the internet. Uh, there's a there's quite a variety of things out there. Oh yeah. There there's a number of complete modular systems with all the basics like three three oscillators and two filters and envelope generators and all the basic stuff for oh anywhere from about fifteen hundred up to about three thousand dollars. A lot of them look very interesting. Oh, Not much too big more than three thousand, you know. If, Stop. Oh well, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I was looking at those too. You know, they go up to forty or fifty thousand. Yes. <laughs> but uh, I was just looking at some of the modulars that are in a little bit, a little bit less expensive range, and it looks like they'd be very versatile, and have a lot of features and a lot of modules in them already. Yeah. Yeah. And if you really want to do it on a budget, I forget who it was. They have one where you can, you can do it in monthly installments. Yes. They send you the case for the first month, and then you get a couple of modules and a power supply, and then a couple more modules. <laughs> and by the end of the com, year, right? you've got yeah. huh? Synthesizer.com. Yeah, I think that's the one. Yeah. Yeah. So there's a there's a lot of different ways to get into it. It's it's very appealing. I never went into it. Uh, I think we have to to go to go with that that flow and and enjoy it at most because. It's a lot of time, and I don't know. <laughs> well, definitely, just as, as Mike said, it is you know, you can drive them at audio frequency with the CV. So um, we just need to get it to happen. <laughs> yep. Yeah, that'll be good. That'll make those uh, analog synths even more uh, enticing. <laughs> and as, as uh, Chris says, is that you know, it's very difficult to control an analog synth um, with traditional keyboard because mm -hmm. the models really don't match. And so they've been kind of developing other stuff, but the Eigenhop is very, very suited for it. The Continuum also, actually. Uh, yeah. But you would you, mm -hmm. like to have yeah. something you have to like to, to play like this. And again, not hug it. and. Uh, and it's got no frets, so some, some people like frets, some people don't like frets. <laughs> I like the guitar that had the movable, removable frets. Yeah, I saw that. <laughs> Isn't that amazing? Oh, fret. Yeah. Oh, yeah, you send you send that, yeah. Yeah, I, I found that on YouTube. Never, yeah, I never saw that it also. I, I know a lot of people would like that for a number of different reasons, because if you if you have a really critical good ear, uh, I know my, my guitar teacher does, and when you start playing a wide range on the fingerboard, mm -hmm. you're down low, you're up high, you can almost never get both ends to be precisely correct. Yes. So so you know, he, he he tracks the low part, then he has to do a slight tuning difference so he can get the high part as accurate as he wants it. And that was on a very, very expensive instrument. So it's just, you know, yeah. it's just the nature of strings and frets yes. that uh, they can't be exactly right all the time across that whole range of a, you know, 21 frets or something. Yeah. So I saw that one. I said, that's interesting. You can actually slide them around. <laughs> there was this guy that wrote a blog about the Eigenhop because he, he, he saw it being talked about on CDM. And he, he said that um, I didn't agree with him. But he he said that the Eigenhop was basically a failure because um, compared to the guitar, it had frets, but they all had the, sh the same size, which means that, according to him, you weren't able to use the frets to be able to locate yourself on the neck. And then I told him, look, man, I've been playing the guitar for more than 20 years, and I absolutely yeah. hate the fact that the frets change size. <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> those, at the, those here are just way too large and those down there, I just can't get my fingers in them. It's horrible. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, I would love a guitar with exactly the same kind of frets. Yeah. But they're just not possible because the nature of a string. And he said, yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's, it's, of course. it's funny how people can have certain, you know, I call them misconceptions because... Yeah. Since it, it's oh, yeah. a traditional instrument, it has to be like that, and, and that's the way it's supposed to be done. It's like, no. <laughs> well, there, there's an easy way around that. Uh, it's just using the uh, the lights on the Eigenharp to mark where you're at. Yeah, well, that's what I told him. Also, you've got the the ridges at the back here. It's yeah, the ridges and also the lights. The lights so, and, yeah. and he was talking uh, about. Um, 
physical, physically knowing where you are without watching the instrument. Oh, that's my bird. He <laughs> <is>. <laughs> hello, hello to him. Hello. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's not the organ harp. Okay. No, it's not. <laughs> well, actually, that's uh, that's a little slim fatty. <laughs> Sounds nice, doesn't it? <laughs> oh, that's a very good. That's a very good patch you got going yes, here. Yes. Yes. <laughs> Sounds just like expressive. a real bird. <laughs> what type of bird is it? I always forget the name in English. Cockatiel, I think. Okay, yeah. yeah. Let me just sounds like it a bird. Let me Google it to see if it's that. I always keep on my, yes, all my birds outside in the neighborhood, so. <laughs> it's a cockatiel. Yeah, that's a pretty bird. <laughs> It is, yes, and it's a very pretty one. We actually got it for free. It was, um, yeah. they, they were shipped, in, they were sitting in a box, and they were about to be shipped off to uh, some kind of uh, bird refuge. And because uh, they came from an old lady that was that died, and the family yeah. didn't want to take in the birds, so but we, we took one in. It's, uh, mm. But oh, nice. you know, as as with a lot of these animals, you never know what you're gonna get, right? Normally, a cockatiel mm -hmm. is extremely friendly and extremely curious and likes to sit on your shoulder and walk around on the desk while you're working and stuff like that. But this one doesn't. This one, <laughs> <laughs> this one hates people, actually. <laughs> you, you, can, you can whistle to it. You can sing songs and it'll sing with you. That, that's a nice thing. When I play the guitar, he absolutely loves when I play the guitar because then it starts to dance. It dances really on, on, on the tempo. It goes <laughs> on the tempo. And then all, well, all of a sudden, it, yip, yip, yip. but if you want to uh, have any kind of other interaction with it, then it just starts to get aggressive. So. <laughs> <laughs> Don't get in its space. <laughs> yeah, exactly that. You can't approach it more than 20 centimeters, otherwise. <laughs> <laughs> and it's funny because it, it accepts a lot more from me than from the rest of the family because I'm, I interact with it a lot. So when when I put my hand in the cage, f first it's like this aggressive reaction, and then I you know, m mimic the head of a, of another cockatiel, and they're like, <laughs> <laughs> and she's looking like that, and then she tries to hit me with her beak, but very you know she kind of misses on purpose, and then I try to hit her hit him also, and then then it's okay, then it's okay. I, can, I, can, I can sit I can sit on the branch with him. It's like. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, It'd be fun, fun to watch. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I have, I have one minor question. Um, sometimes I get confused on the um, configuration, I guess it is, on the keys. They call roll and uh, yaw. Yeah, roll is up and down and yaw is left, right. Okay. So pitch That's bend I thought, is roll. I wasn't quite sure. Yeah, pitch bend is roll. The standard is roll. Pitch yeah. Roll. Yeah. And, and roll. Yaw, okay. Yaw, yaw is the other side. Yeah. Yeah. yeah That's it happens what I to me also. Thought. And once every couple of months, yeah. I have to look it up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm a, I'm a, a low time pilot of airplanes, and so I think of it a little bit differently. <laughs> yeah. I've, I've. Uh, I would Y and X. I never know mm -hmm. which them are because I do a lot of lightning stuff. Uh, in the end, I okay, forget that. <laughs> <laughs> well, that'll X, help. X and Y, yeah. I prefer yeah. pan and tilt, and I know what that does. I was thinking of writing another helpful. agent. Um, I was thinking of for MIDI control. So, because I'm, I'm going around my head, how how can we use the keys as as if they were real rot, rot, you know, rotational keys? So yeah. mm -hmm. uh, no, I, I, I did the latch one, which is which is kind of nice because you have to press it before you rotate, and then yeah, it, if you let it go, it sticks. But I was thinking I actually could create hmm. a, a stateful key. I could have, for example, um, let me just turn on the now, turn off the noise. Could have this key, and basically, if you turn around, it would kind of have re detect that you're revolving, and then slowly oh. inc increment the value that it has, and then 
go back down. And then I was thinking, this is just wishful thinking, I'm not sure that I'm able to, to do it right, but I'll, I'll try it, is that I could change the color of the light. So if it's between, if you go from zero to one, because that's the typical value that we have, if you go from zero to 0 0.33, it would be red. And if it goes from 0 0.33 to 0 0.66, it would be uh, orange. And then the upper orange, one green, yeah. so that you could kind of go through the key and you see the, the light change and go back, circle the round, other way around. And I, I think that that could actually be a good way of having knobs, circular knobs on, on the Eigenharp. Yeah, I like that. I, yeah. I definitely like that. Because, I mean, that, 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 that's the one thing that my MIDI controller, when I'm dealing with, like, Ableton, um, it has a bunch of sliders and knobs, which, of course, the uh, Eigenharp doesn't have. So, yes. But that'd be nice. Yeah, that'd be very nice. Because then I could use those aspects of it, too. I'll keep that in my head for after the uh, yeah. CV over yeah. DC. <laughs> 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 the ID came afterwards, so it has to be done afterwards. <laughs> Otherwise, yeah. I'll never get yeah. it done. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. Cool. Well, I think we'll wrap it up because it's uh, time again. Yeah. Yes. clock over here. Okay. Well. Nice seeing you all again. Sorry, I wasn't there yeah. last yeah. week. It's, uh... Yeah, it's always a, it's always a great time, and I learn learn a lot, and I just enjoy everybody's company here. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's, it's 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 my little my little group of friends that I get together with uh, twice a week now. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's it's a pity that I can't make it on Wednesdays most of the time. It's, uh... Yeah, well, four o'clock here is awful late for you. It's eleven, eleven at night. And... Yeah. Yeah, I made it once. Kind light. of depends if my girlfriend falls asleep or not. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you have to to move move your house, uh, and then you maybe we will be able. <laughs> yes, maybe then. Yeah. Yeah. In two years. And you get the new house built, huh? Yes. yes. There, are, there are some interesting plans. I like that. <laughs> yeah, I always like watching people's plans, so I thought you know, I'd share them. And... Can get so I don't know much about Belgium. Where in Belgium are you located? I'm currently located in um, the southern southern part of Belgium. It's uh, okay. And near near Mons. I probably will not tell you anything okay. at all. <laughs> um, but I'll where be is that in relation to west, uh, east? I'll be to moving Spa. To east. Well, Spa I'll be moving camps. closer to Spa in the new yeah. house. Yeah. I I uh, I see that once or twice a year because I watch uh, some of the races they have there, and right. it's always yeah. just such a beautiful section of country there, and it's lovely. Yeah, yeah. well, it's it's love those long shots. Where we're gonna live, it's closer to there, and the country is much greener, and it's much nicer to live. Yeah, it looks like it'd be, be a nice place. Yeah, <laughs> just okay. gotta get it well. built and get the approvals and everything. It's not gonna be easy. <laughs> To, to, yeah, tomorrow you are something. Yeah. So you're you're building it yourself. You're doing all the hammering and nailing and. No, I'm not doing. No. <laughs> well, no. I Very tried, smart. I tried that in this house. It's no way that I'm doing that again. It's, uh, but I did quite a number of things. But I realized that it's just not. I don't enjoy it. So it makes no sense to spend all that time on it. Yeah, it's uh, that's a, that's a very big project. Most uh, most people don't, uh, even if they're already carpenters, they just don't do well doing it. No. <laughs> it's huge. And it's then huge. and then plus, if there's a mistake, you can blame the, the person that you you paid to do it. And <laughs> that's true. But problem is to get them to fix it. Then. That's well, that's true. Yeah. <laughs> oh, well. Okay. Well, I'll try. I'll try Wednesday to be there, and otherwise, uh, see okay. you next week. Okay. Yeah. Very good. Okay, yeah. keep in touch. Bye-bye, <laughs> everybody. Bye-bye, Gerd. Bye-bye.